Simple, effective techniques for job search. Online resources from supporting employment transitions in Nanaimo, British Columbia. Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at simple, effective formatting for your resume. We're going to be using Word 2007. You can pause this video at any time, or you can use the slider to go back and repeat any section that you'd like to see again. It's also possible to enlarge to full screen using most video players. In today's tutorial, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of formatting this resume. It's simple and effective. We're going to start with an unformatted resume. We'll need you to type all the information that's going to go into the resume, but don't worry about any of the spaces or any other formatting because we'll add that as we go along. The first step is to decide on the look that you want for your resume. So we're going to start by creating your letterhead. So our resume is ready to format. We're using Word 2007 and this is the home ribbon up here. This is the, got all of the little icons for most of the functions that we are going to be uh, using. First thing we're going to do is to choose the font that we want. So I'm going to put my cursor in the uh, document. Then I'm going to use the control key and the A key at the same time. And that has highlighted everything in the document. So I don't have to change my font more than once. Now that I have everything highlighted, I'm going to go up to the font section up here. And I'm going to choose Times New Roman, which is the one that was used in this particular sample. And you can see that it has changed. I'll just undo that for a second. You can see what it was like before. It didn't have any little feet on the bottom. I'm going to redo that. It's now Times New Roman for everything. So now that we're, our uh, font has been set, I'm going to uh, start working on the name. So I'm highlighting just the name this time. And the first thing I want to do is to make it black or bold. These buttons here are like a light bulb switch, or rather a light switch. They will turn on and they will turn off. So I'm putting it on and when it turns on, it gets that little orangey tinge to it. So that has been on, but now I want it to be larger. I'm gonna go over to this section again in the font that's called Grow Font got the A with the uh, arrow pointing up. So I'm going to hit that a couple of times. And each time that I hit it, the number in the box beside it changes. The higher the number, the larger the size of the letter. So I'm going to take this all the way up till 20, which is the size that we have in the sample we are looking at now. The font size is 11, and that's fine for the address. But we didn't want it to be all in a paragraph form. We wanted it to be across the line in this particular sample. So I'm going to do this the simplest way that we can, which is uh, to take all of those returns out so that it's no longer in a paragraph. So I'm going to just uh, delete each one of those. Just bear with me. It doesn't look quite right yet, but we'll make it there. Then I'm going to put in a few spaces just to uh, even these all out. Now in a later lesson, we're going to learn about tabs, but right now we're doing the simplest possible one. I'm going to use the spacebar key one, two, three times there. And I want to separate out the home phone number. So one, two, three, four, and maybe another one over here. And one, two, three, four. Oops, one too many, so I'm just going to take that last uh, one out, uh, just uh, deleting it. If you find that something moves around the uh, to the next line, that usually means that we just have one too uh, many of our spaces. So we have that all on uh, one line, the way that we had it in our sample. And next we're going to put in that line. 
Now, the simplest way to put in a line is you have to be with your cursor in the line that you want to have that underline uh, be, uh, beneath. And then you see this box up here. This is where we have um, can put borders or lines. And I'm just going to add a line. That's a one simple line. That's a line we're going to use several times uh, now. But in our sample, we actually had a more complex line. To get different types of lines, we're going to use the drop down and we're going to go to borders and shading. Borders and shading will allow us to choose a different type of line. This is the line that we used in our sample. It has a heavy bar at the bottom and a light bar up at the top. So I've selected that. I want to put it underneath the text that I have selected. I go OK and there we are. So here's a nice easy way to get your letterhead. This is one of several that we'll be showing you uh, in our various tutorials. Next, we will format all of your headings. There are many different ways that you can format your headings. For today's sample, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the headings that have already been typed into the document, highlight it, turn on the bold, which is up here, the on-off bold, hit the grow font twice, so we want to take it up to 14. Then we want to add a single simple line, so here is our line right there. Now that we have what we want for the heading that was in the sample, we're going to copy it. My cursor is still in the line that I want to copy. I'm going to hit Format Painter, which is up here. Turn that on. Then bring my cursor over the line that I want to make the same. There we go. Quite simple. But this is uh, just turns on one at once, and then automatically goes off, so we have to turn it on each time. So once again, I'm going to have my cursor in the line that I want to copy. Format Painter, drag it over the area that I need to be the same, let go, and there we are. And we'll do that one more time with the education. So cursor in the line that is going to be copied, Format Painter, drag it over, let it go. And there we have, very simply, a simple but effective heading from the sample. Now it's time to add the bullets. Bullets are very effective, but luckily they're also very easy to do. We're going to start by highlighting the entire section that needs the bullets. Then we're going up to the bullets button, which is up at the top here in the paragraph section. Turn that on. And this is another one of those buttons that can turn on and off. So I'll hit it again to take it off once again, turning it on. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to highlight the section that requires the bullets, go up to my bullets button and turn it on. Now you may notice that when you do uh, add your, your bullets that they didn't look like these nice little round dark bullets and that's because you have a selection of bullets up here which I'm going to show you. The little arrow that points down will give you a list of recently used bullets. So if I wanted to change my bullet to the arrows, you can see that it had changed down there when I hover over the arrow. Perhaps I want it to be the check marks or I want it to be a square. So I'm just going to add the check marks there so you can see how that happens. Then I'm going to undo that because in our sample we had the traditional round dark bullets. So there you go, bullets. It's most effective to do your spacing with tabs. Whenever possible, we want to use the tab instead of the space bar in order to make our spaces. And that's because the uh, space bar can act a bit like an elastic. It will change, expand, or contract depending on the amount of letters that are in the same line as it. 
So we're going to be using tab in this case, but the first thing we're going to do before we even get started on that is we want to make sure that the letters are the size that we want them to be, including whether they have bold or not. So we'll finish formatting each line by putting the bold in. You notice that that pushed it over just a little bit. So I'm going to come down and put the bold on the uh, title, which is what we had in our sample in each case. Then I'm going to come back and put my cursor where I want to have the beginning of the next section to be what I want to push over. So I'm going to hit my tab button once, and that brings me to an alignment to about a two and a half on my ruler up here. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to put a tab over by the dates to bring it in you know, alignment more to the, uh, the right hand side. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to come back and put my cursor in the next line. And this time I have to do it three times to make it line up. And I have to push my date over twice. Just do that by eye. Put my cursor by the employer, push that over, and then I'm going to use my tab again so that these are nice and neatly lined up. Now these are lined up on the left hand side of the numbers. They don't go fully to the edge. I'm going to show you in a different lesson how to do that. We're sticking with the most simple method for this particular sample. So now I'm going to go down to the education uh, section. I'm just going to add another little space in here between that. And this time we wanted to move uh, over just the date. So I'm going to hit my tab several times until it lines up with the 1994 above. Good. Now we'll do the same here, lining those up. And here we have a nice neat tab section here, nice neat tabs there, very easy to do. And finally we have references. Now for references available upon request. That's usually on the bottom. We don't put references actually on the resume much uh, anymore unless it's by request. So we're going to start by highlighting it. We already know how to make that bold. The next little button over uh, to the right of the bold is the italic. I'm going to click that one on. Again, it's on and off. You can see that. So we're going to put that on. And finally, we want to make it in the middle of the page. If we go over to our paragraph section up here, you can see that right now it is left aligned. If I go over to the next one that says center, it makes it perfectly in the uh, center of the page. I'm going to just make one more grow font and there we have our references available upon request exactly as we have it in our sample. If you wish, you can add a page for it. So we've now put all of the formatting into our sample resume. I'm going to show you how to see what it looks like all at once. There's a button up here called Print Preview that will give you a different uh, way of looking at it. So you can see the layout in general, how much white space there is, and so on. And you can turn that off without actually closing the document by closing Print Preview. So. We have all of the formatting done for this sample, but I'm going to show you one more thing that is optional. Some people like it, some don't. And that is called our page border. We're going to be going into a different tab. We're going to go into page layout. You can see we're in the home tab right now. Now we're going to click on page layout, and that gives us different tools that we have here. One of those is page border, which is in the middle. It's very simple for us to add a border. I'm going to just click on that once, and I'm going to choose a simple box with a simple line on it, and I'm going to apply it to the whole document. Click OK, and there we go, we have a border. I'm going to show you that on the print uh, preview so that you can see what that looks like. It's easy to turn on, easy to turn off. Some people like those borders, some don't. So that is how to add your border. I'm going to just close the preview and you can take a look as I scroll through what it looks like up here. 
If you decide that you don't want it, again, very simple to do. We are in the page layout, page borders. This time we'll go none, apply it with OK, and we're back to our original document. Thank you for using this tutorial from Supporting Employment Transitions. We are located in Nanaimo, British Columbia. All of our services are funded in whole or part through the Canada-British Columbia Labor Market Development Agreement. Thank you and good luck with your job search.